Hey, this is Jamie with Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Flotilla. Flotilla is a game that I played this past Thursday. I don't own it, but I do have some photos of it to show off here. Very high-tech, printed out photos. Um, Flotilla really impressed and surprised me. It's a fairly heavy Euro game, but it distills many of the rules, some of the rules, at least the core actions you're taking in the game, down to the Concordia card system which is that you, all players start out with the same exact hand of cards. Each one tells you exactly what to do. In Flotilla, they do that in both icons and text, which I love. And you uh, simply play a card and do the thing on the card, and that's your turn. And then at a certain point, when you want to get your cards back, because you're, you're discarding cards as you play them, you play a certain card, the captain, that gathers all your crewmates back. You earn money for each card that you collected back, and you continue playing. The flow of it is really nice. It doesn't require any rounds. It's a super streamlined mechanism. I love to see this mechanism in pretty much any game. Um, but that's not my favorite mechanism in the game. I mean, it's one that I really, really like, but there's actually a couple different things that I want to mention today because there's a lot of unique mechanisms in this game. Uh, whether or not you like this type of game, I would highly recommend trying Flotilla because it has some really unique elements to it. One little thing is it has a mechanism where you can rescue people, and it's a very abstract mechanism, but I really liked it for some reason. It added a really nice element of... Uh, it wasn't thematic at all, but it added a nice interaction, which is it, it was a five-point track that moved clockwise. There was one token shared by all players. It's a competitive game, but this token was shared by all players. And that token moved clockwise whenever you rescued a survivor, whenever you found someone out in this ocean and rescued them. And you can see, and each slot on this track had has a different bonus. And so you know uh, at any given time, if, if you want a certain bonus on that track, then you have to time your decision based on the position of that token on the track. And so you're interacting with other players in a, in a passive way. You're not directly hurting any player, but um, your decisions are impacted by other players as they, move, as, as they move that same token around the track, depending on when you want to move to a certain bonus on that track. I'm describing that very poorly, and I don't have a photo of it. One other mechanism I like, there are a couple of them here, is the delving mechanism. One thing that you can do is go diving for resources, and that's what these dice are for. There are three different types of dice depending on how deep you're going. The deeper you go, the better the rewards on the dice, but the more risk you are that you'll get radiated. Um, so you can choose if you want to delve on shallow tiles or deeper tiles, depending on where you position your boats on the board. And it's just fun to roll these dice and see what you get. I love custom dice, and I like how simple and streamlined the, the action is, but that there are these other layers of decision points that go into it. Um, before I get to my, quite, my, num my number one favorite, I also really like the economic track, which you can kind of see up here. I don't really typically like stock games. And there is a stock like economic element to this game, but I really like how it's done in Flotilla. Basically, there's a single track with four different resource tokens on it. And whenever you sell resources, you say, okay, I'm gonna sell four red barrels. Then you look at the current price for the red token, say it's five, and so you'd get $20 for selling, five, uh, selling four barrels at $5 each. And then because you sold them, the price for those barrels goes, I believe it goes down. Yeah, if you buy them, it goes up. If you sell them, it goes down. And so you just move that token on the track. It's super, super streamlined and elegant. I really like how they did that. And I like that, it, that all the tokens share the same track, but start on a slightly different space. However, let's get to my number one final favorite mechanism, and that is the circular influence tracks. I really, really love the way these work. Basically, at any given time, there are four cards available for players to try to acquire. Um, so it's not a bunch of different cards like you see in uh, typically in deck building games. And each of these stacks is unique. It's a unique type of card. I think they're like guilds or something like that. Um, each of the cards in each stack is unique and they're unique to that stack. You have to play a certain card, a card called a seeker card that moves your influence token um, a certain number of spaces on these tracks, depending on the type of seeker you play. Some seekers move a token a lot on one track. Some move your to all of your tokens on one tra on different tracks, one space or two spaces each. It really depends on the card. But when you reach this spot on the track, the card spot, it means that you just gain the top card. So at any given time, you aren't like purchasing this card for resources. You're not spending resources. Instead, you are just influencing them. And as you gain influence on this track, you gain the top card. 
If you want later in the game, this arrow says that you can skip over that. So if you don't need any more cards, you can just skip over it. Oh, and the card goes directly to your hand, which is awesome too. Um, and as you circle around, as you, you can go around and around these tracks. As you do, you can add permanent influence tokens to the track for area control at the end of the game. This mechanism was incredibly satisfying to play with. I, I loved, I focused solely on it. And I think if I played again, while I would do other strategies differently, I would have just as much fun moving around these tracks. It is so rewarding. You gain little bonuses along the way. Like this one gains you a coin when you move there onto or past that spot, same here. So there's all these little bonuses on these tracks. It's, it feels so good to move around them. And I like how elegant it is to get the cards. It's an accumulation of influence to get the cards rather than spending a certain resource or having a resource in hand to acquire the cards. Brilliant mechanism. I mean, this mechanism alone, it's worth playing the game for this mechanism alone. The elephant in the room is that there is a big other mechanism in Flotilla which involves flipping. There's a, at a certain point in the game, you can choose to flip over your player mat and flip over all your tiles. It's a very interesting mechanism. I think it's worth like maybe watching a video about how that works. I did not find that particular mechanism to enhance the game, especially for a first play. It was very frustrating, well not frustrating, very overwhelming on a first play to include that mechanism. And honestly, there were so many other good mechanisms in the game that I don't know if that mechanism added to all these other mechanisms that are so much fun and creative. I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't want to criticize the game for it, but I just wanted to mention that because when you hear about Flotilla, you'll probably hear about that flippy mechanism, but don't forget about all these other really cool mechanisms in the game because I think these are even more fun. They're maybe not as clever or as unique as that flipping mechanism, but they're still a ton of fun. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts on Flotilla. I hope you get the chance to play. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or if any of these mechanisms remind you of another game, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that game in the comments as well. Thanks.